stormtroopers don't actually have bad aim. I get this one's like a funny haha -ha meme, but let's be real, they don't actually have bad aim. On the Death Star, the only reason our protagonists get away are because the Empire wants them to get away. You remember this this scene right here? I'm sure the homing beacon is secure aboard their ship. I'm taking an awful risk, Vader. During the escape from Tatooine, Han has partial cover using the Falcon. So it kind of makes sense that he's not immediately killed. And then the intro fight, there was literally no reason the Empire should have been able to get into the Tant of Four. They're bottlenecked into a single doorway. So how did they manage that? It should have been devastating for them, but it wasn't. When we get into the other movies, it becomes even clearer. Hoth was a total disaster for the Rebels. The Empire totally steamrolled them. They didn't even stand a chance. During the escape from Cloud City, there's a couple of like, what was that moments? But for the most part, it's our heroes undercover fighting stormtroopers that are out in the open, and that kind of explains why the stormtroopers are getting killed. Range has always been a thing in Star Wars. This one makes me really mad because if you're gonna criticize the sequels, use real arguments. Don't make up fake shit like, what about range? It's always been a thing. The very first time we see a TIE fighter, Obi-Wan says, Be as well to let it go. It's too far out of range. Not for long. And then two seconds later, Han replies, I think I can get him before he gets there. He's almost in range. If that's not evidence enough for you, in Empire, the Falcon takes multiple direct hits from Star Destroyers and walks it off because it's out of its range. In Attack of the Clones, Obi-Wan takes a ton of fire from Slave 1 and he walks it off like nothing happened because he's out of range. There's so much more to space battles than just hit it with the laser. Fuel has always been a thing. This was a big issue for people in The Last Jedi, but to me it doesn't seem like this is a problem. In Episode 3, when Obi-Wan lands on Utapau, he says this. With your kind permission, I should like some fuel. And then, did we all forget why we stopped in Tatooine and Phantom Menace? That was because of a hyperdrive fuel leak. We'll have to land somewhere to refuel and repair the ship. Anyone actually upset about this clearly didn't pay attention during Phantom Menace. The Death Star was already protected. The movie explains this. The exhaust port was ratioed, which is why they needed a specific type of torpedo to get into the exhaust port. I mean, listen to the briefing. It's a small thermal exhaust port right below the main port. The shaft is ray shielded, so you'll have to use proton torpedoes. It's not even the main exhaust port, it's a secondary exhaust port, which makes total sense for a secondary system to be overlooked by designers as a possible weakness. Rogue One was amazing, but we really didn't need this explanation of a guy who put a kill switch in the Death Star. It already made sense. You know what else made sense? Ewoks. For starters, they had the Imperial Army outnumbered like 40 to 1. On top of that, you know what they had? They didn't have blasters, they had sticks. Two sticks and a rock for a whole platoon, and we had to share the rock. Do you know what Stormtrooper armor is designed to protect against? Blasters. If you have armor that's not designed to protect you against blunt force trauma, and dudes with a bunch of rocks show up to your front door, you're gonna have a bad time. On top of that, the Ewoks have the strength of Wookiees. Because they were supposed to be Wookiees. The only reason they're not is because it was too expensive to make a bunch of Wookiee suits. So they made mini Wookiees, which are the Ewoks. So imagine a Wookiee throwing a rock at you. Put on any helmet. I dare you. I double dare you. Put on any helmet. A Wookiee will fucking kill you if it threw a rock at your face. So the, the Empire, they're outnumbered, underprepared, undergeared. What are they supposed to do? Like, like how do you win this as the Empire? I don't think you do. I, I, I think you're just like... It's like America and Vietnam. You're just not prepared for that kind of warfare. And the last one, the last big one at least, is that Rey never beat Luke in a fight. They never fought. Uh, Rey attacked Luke. Let's watch the scene together. Really pay attention to Luke. He's not fighting Rey, per se. He's just kind of walking away, right? And then the only reason Luke falls over is because she pulls a lightsaber on him. Like, this wasn't a fight. This was just Rey attacking Luke. So next time you're going to criticize, especially the sequels, make sure you know what you're talking about. 
because I am so tired of hearing invalid criticism for the sequels. There's so many legitimate things to complain about. Stop complaining about Ray fighting Luke in, in range, in fuel, because you sound like you don't know anything about Star Wars when you do that. Poor Bucky, he's unlucky. His only friend is a ducky. Poor Bucky, he's unlucky. Only friend is a ducky. That was actually good.